Hello and welcome into Good Morning KU. I'm Farzine Vasugian. I'm Jackson Long. Good to be here. And a big show for you guys this morning. It was a pretty busy weekend. I know football and basketball season, you know, they're in the past, but still a lot to talk about. This past weekend, the Kansas City Royals really turned things around after a very atrocious start to the season. The Kansas Relays also took place at Rock Chalk Park, the first event that's taken place at Rock Chalk Park. And uh, also the Boston Marathon underway in Boston. We'll talk about uh, that in just a moment. But first, let's start with the Kansas City Royals. A really good weekend. 5-1 and one last week. Lost yesterday to the Twins, but that's not a mirror image of what happened this past week. As they're getting swept by the Twins, the, the Royals really turned around. Now at 9-8, and eight, what's been the change in, in, in that for the Royals this week? I think it starts with the hitting. And, and you've seen a lot of improvement over the last well, six games, I guess. Um, and all the games they won of the five uh, scored four more runs, which is uh, way above their season average. They're still, they went from 30th in the league to 27th in the run scored. So you're seeing an improvement in the last week. My, Mike Moustakis finally got going a little bit, had two home runs. Uh, Alcides Escobar has hit fantastic after starting the year on a big time slump. He's, he's closing in on 300 uh, hitting for the year. So the holes in the lineup are starting to shore up and it's it's been good for the Royals in the last week and a big important uh, weekend coming up as well. Yeah, you know what I noticed is in the standings before yesterday's loss, the Royals were just percentage points behind Detroit. Now they're one game behind because of the loss, but that just shows you in April, I don't know if this could happen in July or August, but in April, one week can make a big difference in baseball. Yeah. Yeah, the Royals are right in the fix of it, and just you mentioned a game behind Detroit, and actually if the season ended today, they would play in the one-game wild card with Texas. So <laughs> Royals fans are in the playoffs right now. Uh, it's, you know, it's hard to say, and of course, very small sample size at this point. Yeah. But uh, going forward, it's encouraging. Really, the AL is kind of just beating up on each other. The uh, lots of teams with eight or eight or more losses. Detroit has six. Uh, Oakland's kind of running away a little bit uh, over Texas in the in the West. But really, between the AL Central and the AL East, all the teams are in it right yeah. now. Is this a sign of positivity that the Royals can keep this n not just into a flash, but now into consistency for the remainder of the season? Well, in the five and one stretch, they went against Minnesota and Houston. Not great competition. But if you go five and one, that's you know you're supposed to take care of. The those bad teams. Yeah. I think this is more representative of how the Royals can play for the rest of the season. I think that when you see this five and one stretch, maybe it's four and three, four games against Cleveland and then three against Baltimore. So if the Royals come out of that with a four and three record, that would definitely be a positive. Royals go five and one on the week, as we mentioned, nine and eight on the season, one game behind Detroit in the AL Central. So they're going to continue to keep that up. Let's switch into more local news. The Kansas Relays took place earlier this week. And uh, the Kansas Jayhawks took home 13 titles in the Kansas Realize. Here is the graphic of a couple of the awards that the Jayhawks took place. Uh, Diamond Dixon, who won the gold medal in the uh, Olympics and also was part of the uh, national championship team, uh, took the women's 4x100 meter relay, also 4x400 meter relay. Uh, Lindsey Vollmer, who won uh, Big 12 uh, Track Player of the Week, uh, took home the 100 meter hurdles in that competition. So a couple of the highlights there. But Diamond Dixon, I, I, one of the more polished players. I mean, she, her name doesn't get recognized a whole lot because she's not in the top revenue sports. But uh, I think more people have gotten to know her since she got the gold medal in the Olympics and also the national championship and uh, make some noise in the uh, in the Kansas Relays at Rock Chalk Park. Well, women's track and field has been fantastic. The outdoor team won the national title last year. Um, so I think that she's getting, I bet she's the most recognized uh, female athlete on campus maybe. Uh, Diamond Dixon, a great name as well for um, a track star. And, and, and you saw, you know, the performance was indicative, a U.S. Olympian, um, but it was cool to showcase that at the new Rock Chalk Park as well. Yeah, I wanted to ask about Rock Chalk Park because I think that's a very interesting uh, re uh, venue that they're trying to add here in Lawrence. It's on 6th Street. Uh, a, a bit far away from campus, but they really want to make a lot out of it. Now, the soccer is going to be playing there this year. I think the construction is going to be finished by the by the summertime. We were speaking with uh, the, our director, and he mentioned that they're they just cleaned everything out, all the track and field gear, so that way they can start uh, co uh, continuing and wrapping up construction there. The uh, Rock Chalk Park is great. Uh, the facilities are drastically improved over the Memorial Stadium, but. I, I, my grandpa actually ran track here in the 50s, um, kind of the, the beginning of a great track program on both, both sides, both men's and women's. And they like the new facilities. They think it brings in good opportunities to KU. The history of Memorial Stadium is what will be, not I guess thrown away, but um, I guess put to the side a little bit with the move to Rock Chalk Park. But um, lots of positives definitely coming from the move. And I think going forward with the softball and soccer teams playing there as well, a uh, good facility upgrade for KU. 
Last thing we want to talk about in our opening segment, the Boston Marathon, the 118th Boston Marathon taking place right now, already underway in Boston, of course. And uh, it, it, it's, a, it's one of the bigger stories because after what happened last year in the Boston bombings, three people killed. We'll get a little bit more on that later with the news with uh, Stephen Haley. But uh, it, it's one of the more brighter things to see. And they had a moment of silence uh, this morning for those uh, last year. Lots of very cool and, and memorable and, and mo very moving, I would say, presentations over the last couple of days. 36,000 runners in this year's marathon and uh, a very strong showing. Of course, the Boston Strong mantra has been, uh, has been around since that, um, since that day. But, you know, at the Red Sox game yesterday, they, they end up winning over the Orioles. But, um, you know, they, they recognize all the first responders and some of the survivors and had a moment of silence for uh, the, the three people that that died in, in last year's event, but I just I think it's cool to see a city rally so well um, around it, and, and really Boston couldn't have done a better job. Yeah, I know the Bruins had a really su successful hockey season last year, and the Red Sox, of course, won the World Series, and that really helped just bring some positivity to that city after what happened in the Boston bombing. So very cool to see everything going on in Boston. The 118th Boston Marathon underway right now in Boston, Massachusetts. He's Jackson Long. I'm Farzine Vasigan. We're going to take a break. When we come back, Stephanie Bickle and Haley McGavick will have the news for us. And later in the show, we'll talk to Emma Hogue, who's upstairs on the roof of the Union, to give us the weather. Stay tuned. We'll be back after this. Good morning. I'm Stephanie Bickle. And I'm Haley McGavick. This is your Monday Good Morning KU News Update. It's Patriots Day, and for over a million people in Boston, that means just one thing. The 118th Boston Marathon. This year's race will take on additional meaning as it has been one year since the tragic bombings. 36,000 runners are scheduled to take part in the race. Security has been tightened for this year's event after three people were killed and more than 260 were injured last year. An airport ground crew at Maui's Kalui Airport discovered a dazed and confused teenage boy stumbling across the tarmac. The 16-year-old said he stowed away in the wheel well of a Hawaiian Airlines plane from San Jose, California. In altitudes that would have reached 38,000 feet, the boy survived for almost five hours without oxygen and in sub-zero temperatures. A mix-up at Kraft Foods is causing the recall of 96,000 pounds of Oscar Mayer wieners. The U.S. Department of Agriculture reported Sunday that Kraft's Oscar Mayer Classic wieners may instead contain the company's classic cheese dogs. At this time, there have been no reports of adverse reactions. Former U.S. Senator Bob Dole will be visiting campus tomorrow morning. The 90-year-old politician and former presidential candidate will be spending this week in Kansas. The meet and greet session tomorrow will be at the Dole Institute of Politics beginning at 10 a.m. Parking will be limited, so get there early if you want to meet a living legend. The Lawrence Jewish Community Center will host an interfaith vigil this evening to honor the victims of last week's fatal shooting in Overland Park. Several congregations will gather at 7 p.m. at the center for an interfaith vigil for community, solidarity, and hope, which will feature prayer, songs, and poetry to promote tolerance and diversity. The center is located at 917 Highland Drive, and the vigil is free and open to the public. Thanks. That's all we have for today. We will return with Farzine and Emma after the break. Welcome back into Good Morning KU, our final segment here on the show on a very nice Monday morning. And here to talk to us about that nice Monday morning, Emma Hogue, who's on the roof of the Kansas Union. Emma, how's it going? Hey, Farzine, I'm posted out here on the roof of the Union with a gorgeous view overlooking Strong Hall and the stadium. It's about 60 degrees right now, cloudy and a little bit breezy. However, we will begin to see some thunderstorms starting at 2 o'clock. Um, those have been anticipated yesterday that we never saw, so I think we're going to go ahead and see those coming around 2 o'clock today. Yeah, and I, I heard it's supposed to be throughout the day, and then I've heard it's going to go on and off, so who knows what we'll have uh, later today, but uh, we should anticipate them at some point uh, later today. Well, last week, kind of a chilly week, kind of up and down. Uh, this week, what should we expect from uh, the weather here in the Lawrence area? Right, last week we saw temperatures all over the place. However, this week it should be more consistent um, in the lower 70s and pretty much sunny. However, Thursday we are expected to see some isolated thunderstorms, but those should give way to a beautiful and sunny weekend in the mid 70s, which will be amazing just to be outside and enjoy that weather. So that's what we're looking for forward to for the rest of the week. So can we go ahead and get rid of those sweatshirts and winter coats or do we still need them right now? 
You know, we can. I say ditch them. I'm in shorts right now, and it is perfect. So hopefully we can get into that tank top weather here pretty soon, Farzine. Awesome. All right, Emma, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Emma Hogue from the roof of the Kansas Union giving us our weather update. That'll do it for our show this morning on Good Morning KU. I'm Farzine Vasugian. For Emma Hogue, thank you for watching. Thank you.